1960, Freeman Dyson proposed that one day, an advanced alien civilization would stop tinkering with primitive things like wind turbines and nuclear reactors. Instead, they would undertake something grandiose and build a structure completely surrounding their home star to capture as much solar energy as possible. This gigantic megastructure would allow them to harness an immense amount of energy for activities such as Bitcoin mining, powering electric cars, and creating funny YouTube videos, fully enjoying all the benefits of their high-energy civilization. But what if the alien civilization was us? In recent years, one of humanity's primary problems has become the need for energy. Most of it comes from fossil fuels, which can run out. It would be incredibly convenient to use an almost unlimited energy source. How about the sun? This isn't as fantastical as it might seem at first glance. So, is it possible? Our sun emits nearly 400 septillion watts per second. That's a trillion times more than all the energy consumed by humanity throughout its history. Or it's almost like two billion czar bombs exploding every second. Unfortunately, only a small fraction of solar energy reaches our planet. Even if we covered the entire surface of the Earth with solar panels, we would still capture less than one ten billionth of all the energy produced by our sun. On the other hand, we are alive only because the sun's energy is not solely directed at our planet, but spreads evenly in all directions. Plus, we are about 93 million miles away from it. The deeper solar radiation penetrates our atmosphere, the more its density decreases. If all the solar energy falling on the surface of Texas alone could be converted into electricity, it would be 300 times greater than the total output of all power plants in the world. But Imagine for a moment. Humanity has completely exhausted the energy of our planet and now harnesses the power of the sun, or approximately 10 to the power of 26 watts. Renowned physicist Michio Kaku has pointed out that this could happen around the year 3000. What will happen to Earth and humanity under such conditions? The energy of the sun will change everything. In less than a thousand years, we could colonize a tiny part of the Milky Way galaxy learn to ignite stars and destroy Jupiter-sized planets. Nothing known to science would be capable of annihilating our culture. Collisions with asteroids could be avoided using rocket technology. The greenhouse effect could be neutralized with hydrogen or solar technologies. We could leave the planet or even move it if necessary. With enough energy to alter the trajectories of asteroids, humans will surely learn to guide them around Earth, gradually adjusting its orbit. We might even learn to manage stellar cataclysms or use antimatter engines. All of this is entirely feasible if we can harness the energy of the sun. However, this doesn't mean that humanity will be free from all possible threats forever. Um, even the most advanced technologies cannot nullify the second law of thermodynamics. This law states that chaos in a closed system always increases. In simple terms, all the machines we invent together will produce so much infrared heat radiation that life on the planet would become impossible. No refrigerators would help, they also emit heat. Earth simply risks overheating. Um, to survive despite the second law of thermodynamics, we would need to disperse our invented devices. For instance, we could send most of the technology into outer space. This means that all equipment threatening humanity would operate off-planet. The technology would continue to consume solar energy, but the excess heat would dissipate harmlessly into space everyone would be satisfied. But I've only talked about the possible consequences. Is there any hypothetical device capable of truly harnessing the sun's energy? Surprisingly, yes. This could be done by a so-called Dyson Sphere, a massive hypothetical structure on a cosmic scale. However, will humans ever be able to create such a device? The answer seems to be yes. Of course, this won't happen in the near future, Humanity hasn't yet mastered the necessary technologies, but within a few thousand or tens of thousands of years, such a project could very well be feasible. There are, however, a few nuances. People usually imagine a Dyson sphere as a solid hollow sphere that surrounds an entire star and collects all the energy it produces, a star encased in a massive metallic shell. But this is not the best idea, and it's not just about the size. A Dyson Sphere would have a surface area 550 million times greater than Earth's. This means we have serious material problems. 
we would need to gather materials from several solar systems to get enough metal for such a structure, requiring the destruction of dozens of entire planets. Additionally, such a massive sphere would be gravitationally unstable and would constantly be barred by asteroids. Another problem with this version of the Dyson Sphere is that it completely blocks sunlight, creating a serious issue for solar rays reaching Earth. We need to maintain Earth's temperature and vegetation somehow. As an alternative, consider the idea of a Dyson Swarm, also known as a Dyson Bubble or Dyson Ring. A Dyson Swarm consists of thousands or millions of individual satellites orbiting the star and collecting its energy, making this concept more realistic. These satellites could function like solar panels absorbing energy from our star. More likely, they would act as mirrors, redirecting sunlight to special energy stations. From there, the energy could be directed wherever needed. However, creating a sufficient number of satellites to surround the sun would also require a vast amount of raw material. And by vast, I mean an unreal amount. Scientists have calculated that constructing a Dyson Swarm would require dismantling at least one planet. Only then could we obtain enough material. Mercury is sometimes chosen as the sacrifice for this purpose. It's close to the sun and the perfect size. Well, goodbye, Mercury. I liked you. By the way, did you know that the core of this planet is likely about the size of our moon? It's iron and makes up about 60% of the planet's mass. This is just perfect for our purposes. Well, that was the thought until it turned out that the core is made of liquid metal. Still, this wouldn't prevent us from creating epic, enormous solar panels with high reflective capabilities. Another plus is that Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, which would reduce travel time and make resource extraction easier. Undoubtedly, this is the most realistic and feasible option, and we would indeed use the entire planet. If you're wondering how we would get to Mercury to start the work, don't worry. It's assumed that few humans, if any, would be involved in this process. Humans with their needs like food and air are too weak for such tasks. By the way, check out the video on why humans will never conquer space. Robots, on the other hand, are perfect for this job. Robots don't breathe and don't need food. We need to create robots that will extract Mercury's core and turn it into solar collectors. We also want these robots to be self-replicating, because the more robots there are, the faster they will complete the work. The idea of self-replicating nanobots might sound scary and remind you of Drexler's gray goo, but in reality, we are still far from such technologies. Actually, the story of a Dyson Sphere or Swarm sounds like a plot from a sci-fi novel. The technologies seem unrealistic. But what if Dyson Spheres already exist somewhere in the universe today? Here, it's definitely worth mention mentioning the Kardashev scale, proposed in 1964 by Soviet astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev. This theoretical scale classifies civilizations based on their level of energy consumption. The scale includes three types. Type 1 civilizations use all available energy on their planet, Type 2 use all the energy of their star, and Type 3 use all the energy of their galaxy. Currently, humanity doesn't fit into any of these categories, but expanding to use a Dyson Swarm could push us toward a Type 2 civilization. This is significant because such a civilization would need to find a way to harness the energy of a star, which could also indicate the existence of other intelligent life forms. For this reason, it's also difficult for us to search for other low-power Type 1 civilizations. Therefore, scientists have historically focused on looking for Type 2 civilizations, as their energy footprint is much more noticeable from space. By the way, I have a separate video on my channel about how scientists have detected signs of around 60 Dyson spheres. So subscribe so you don't miss anything interesting. And comment below on what you think. Will this all remain just a theory, or is our civilization destined to conquer new planets and utilize Dyson spheres?